Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. This has been an absolutely crazy day. We have Max Cyril that's helping us run this webinar tonight, who's putting up with me and my webcast dramas, which I think is also funny. Um, we've got Christine Conti joining us this evening, Dr. Evan Osar, and Deborah Atkinson, who's helping us as well. Um, we're going to be talking about tonight assisting with arthritis. We have over 260 people registered for this webinar. We're going to show up, my guess is we're going to end up with about 85, 90, and then we're going to end up with all the recordings. So we're thrilled that you joined us today. As you know, it's 45 minutes. I dive right in. You don't want to hear me talk. So assisting with arthritis. As fitness professionals, we're put in a unique position to help those afflicted with various forms of arthritis, providing a well-designed fitness regime is one of the best forms of treatment and can drastically improve the quality of everyday life. So we've got these wonderful panelists and poor Chris Gellert was supposed to be here tonight and Deborah Atkinson is a rock star, all dressed to work out and is joining us this evening. And we're gonna talk about different um, symptoms, kinds of arthritis and how to train any affected clients and how do we approach them effectively, safely, and conscientiously. Now what I want you guys to do is you're my wonderful people that showed up tonight, so I want you to move your mouse, go to the bottom of your screen, in the middle of the screen, you're going to see the green share button. Don't share it yet. Let's go to the chat box, which is right next door, click on it, and please tell us where you're from. I, I love this. Cincinnati, Ohio, San Francisco Bay Area, Nashville, Tennessee, Maryland, Madison, Wisconsin, Tampa, Florida, home of the goat. Okay, Betty, I, I think you should be a little embarrassed about that. Green Bay, Wisconsin, California. We got you guys from all over. Thank you so much for joining us. I am going to launch right in, give you a quick description of our amazing presenters who have so generously donated their time. Um, we've got Christine Conti. She's got her master's degree in education, and she also authored our chronic disease certification with SCW. She's a medical fitness and arthritis specialist, as well as an individual sufferer herself. She spent almost two decades re researching and studying alongside leading doctors, exercise physiologists, and all sorts of scientists and nutritionists. She's also on the MedFit Network Advisory Board. She's a podcaster with two fit crazies and a microphone. Where she got that name, I'm never going to ask because God knows I don't want to know. And she's also co-creator of Let's Face It Together Facial Exercise. So welcome, Christine Conti. And then we also have the fabulous Evan Osar, who does not live in Chicago, although his office is there. He lives in Wisconsin um, with his wonderful wife, Janice. And he's an internationally recognized speaker, author, expert on assessment, corrective exercise, functional movement. Dr. Rosso has written several books. His, his latest book deals with corrective exercise solution and the SOAS solution. Um, he's developed some of the industry's most advanced training certification on corrective exercise, integrative movement specialist, etc. He is definitely a specialist. And then we have the fabulous Deborah Atkinson. I don't even know Deborah if you remember. I think we met at Athletic Business, Con the Medical Fitness Conference. You were speaking, and um, I was just taken with her presentation. She's a marvelous educator. She's got her master's degree. Um, she really specializes in hormone balancing. Um, she's a fitness expert, a best-selling author. She's got over three decades in the fitness industry, although she looks like she only has two herself. And she's the founder of, yeah, I'm going to throw up a little bit in the back of my own throat. She is the founder of Flipping 50 and has helped over 200,000 women flip their second half of their life. I love it. She's a podcast host. TEDx speaker, blah, 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 amazing woman. We're welcoming Deborah Christine and a non-woman, Evan. Okay, you're our token <laughs> male here today, along yeah. with Max, of course. Um, but I'm going to start with you, Evan. How can we 
approach this discussion with our clients. If we notice arthritis is part of the, the recipe here we're dealing with. Yeah, great question. And one of the things we want to let our clients know is virtually everyone has arthritis, some level of it, some form of it. And it's the number one disability in the world. So not just our own country, in the world. And osteoarthritis is the most common cause of arthritis. So one of the things we want to let our clients know, yeah, while it can cause some movement issues, it can cause discomfort, it can cause lifestyle changes. It doesn't have to define who you are. And there are things that you absolutely can and should do, including nutrition, movement, as well as an overall change in lifestyle. And we'll talk about that tonight. Yes. Um, and Christine, I saw you nodding. She's, she's very demonstrative. Um, what are your thoughts on that? So what fitness professionals need to know is that, to piggyback on Evan, it's one in four people have a form of arthritis and that's adults. I'm not talking people over 65. I'm talking adults, 18 and over. And if we were to do a poll right now, and again, I, you don't have to raise your hand or do this, but if I were to ask everyone right now on, you know, on this webinar, who is, who has one or more forms of arthritis? One of four people, I guarantee would raise their hand. And it's shocking because many times we think, oh, arthritis is for older people or arthritis mm -hmm. is just for, you know, a, a past sporting injury when it's not. And as fitness professionals, we need to understand that this is also an autoimmune disease that affects all ages and all races and all shapes and sizes. And it doesn't just affect your physical being like your joints, like you think of oh, your shoulder, your ankle, it affects your lungs, it affects your heart, it affects your, in, you know, other internal organs. And that is so important to understand when, you know, Evan just mentioned about, you know, the number one leading cause of disability in the world. I mean, it's not just, oh, my finger or my this, it's this is something that can be life changing. And can be something that, you know, if go if gone untreated or not treated correctly when working with a fitness professional could lead someone, you know, unable to move. Yes, definitely. And um, Deborah, you deal with this all the time. Um, what's your approach? You know, one of the things I think we're all going to want to dive right into, how do we do the exercise prescription and what the change is. But one of the things that I notice first is fear and their feelings about number one, not wanting to get moving or fear of trying something new and past experiences get in the way. So I think there's, if we can handle it from that point, as well as diving into the ways we want to help in terms of exercise and know where they're coming from, I think we're going to have to earn their trust a little bit more than we do with some clients. And I like how you phrased it, where they're coming from. That kind of leads, it leads us into this. How do we assess this? How do we determine if someone's got this issue and, you know, they need our help? So, Deborah, how do you do that? Well, often I don't have to assess them. Often they're coming to me telling me I've been diagnosed as I have arthritis or they start to tell me that gripping the weights, often it's grip in their thumb, you know, is getting in the way of them holding on to a weight and that they're sore afterward. And then they'll go for an assessment. So it's definitely it's range of motion. It's my joints are acting up when the weather acts up or, you know, I've had years of trauma or I was in an accident and mm -hmm. I have remaining lingering residual issues from that. So that's definitely how it shows up. I'm in a little different instance in that I'm online talking to virtually people all over the world or working in programs. So it's definitely in groups where they're telling me they've, they've been diagnosed generally or we suspect it. It's a little tricky to use that word because as soon as somebody has that word, it feels like this is a disease and it's a thing. 
Yes, and and it creates, it makes people uncomfortable. Yes. Um, Evan, you deal with not only just, uh, let's say, fitness-related or directed clients, but you deal with physical therapy. And, and how do you do assessments? You know, you are seeing people one-on-one, -on -one and thank goodness, face-to-face, -face, finally. Mm -hmm. um, and how do you approach this, the assessments? Yeah, one of the things that, as a profession, I, I've always been a pioneer, of, not a pioneer, I shouldn't say that, <laughs> advocate of, and I guess pioneer of-, of You've assessment. been a pioneer, you definitely have. <laughs> so one of the things that we need to be better at and consistently do with our clients is assessment, because assessments can pick up many of these issues that our clients have. So that helps us be at the forefront of the health fitness sort of team, so to speak, so that way we can identify a lot of the things that our clients have going on, some of the movement habits, the posture and movement habits that directly contribute to and or perpetuate these osteoarthritic changes. So doing a postural screening, and what's great about some of these assessments is you can do them whether you're training virtually, which I still do, I still consult with clients and patients virtually, and also when you see them online. So a postural evaluation, a movement screen, so you're doing some kind of squatting, forward bending, maybe just reaching overhead, just simple things that your clients can do to get a sense of where they're at and what you're working with because when you have the more information that you have the better you can create a program that will fit with your client because there's some things that regardless of, of what where they have osteoarthritis or some kind of arthritis or what joints are bothering them there's things that they can still do and, and it's important for us to figure that out what's going to bother them and then where do can we start to work to give them success to give them that sort of or address that fear of movement given that safe movement based upon the information you've gathered from their assessment, as well as the information you have from their medical professionals. Yes, and um, how do you approach this, Christine, when you're dealing with your clients and you're dealing with assessments and then evaluations and recommendations? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a big uh, time out on this because I think we completely skipped over a really important step. Before you even think about assessing, what are you assessing for? If you as a fitness professional do not know what osteoarthritis is, if you have no idea what rheumatoid arthritis is, it's an autoimmune disease or lupus or ankylosing spondylitis, then how do you know what you're looking for? And the first step, I think, before we even go into assessment is education. And, you know, when we think about, you know, all of us here are course authors in our respective, you know, fields. And that starts first. In order to think about helping people in an arthritis community, first, I need you to educate yourself about chronic diseases. And what are they? What are the symptoms? What should people be feeling? And like Evan said, if you're reaching overhead or Deborah said before about gripping weights, if you're familiar with types of arthritis, you know that that's a symptom. You know that, you know, and again, as a fitness professional, it's not our job to say, you know what? I see that your hands are, you know, you're having grip issues. You must have arthritis. You, no, our job is to say, I see that you are experiencing weakness when you grip your weights. I notice that you're having some sort of issues with lateral movement of your shoulders. Have you spoken with your medical professional? And mm -hmm. that I think is something that's overlooked sometimes because we can spot things, but let's know what we're looking for. Then let's refer them. And then when we get back a letter from a doctor saying they're cleared to move, then we know, and even if you don't, you Google it, right? Best your ability. You then you know what you're looking for and what muscles that you know you can improve upon. Because that's really your job. Your job is not a doctor. Your job is a movement specialist. And recognizing that movement is mm -hmm. key, and then recommending they get the assistance um, pursuant to their own personal education uh, is important. 
And I will tell you guys, just make, you know, we think when we talk about arthritis, we're only talking about someone who's 68 years old. And I'm reading Pam Bloom or mm -hmm. Pam Blum. Um, she said she was diagnosed with osteoarthritis in her 30s. And I was slash am very active. Um, and he, she's got some wear and tear. So this is a great topic for all of us. She's now 68 and she's extremely active, which feels a lot better than sitting and kneading, knitting. She said she can't knit, except then when Heidi says, hey, Pam, I'm sitting here watching this and knitting. So whatever, everything is good. <laughs> but, but what I do really appreciate is a lot of times we categorize this as only an active older adult or an older adult activity. And it is not, it's not isolated that way. But we all, whenever we begin a fitness regime, we need to do our wave of, of liability and we need to get a medical release from a physician, just an email from the nurse that says so-and-so patient is permitted to exercise. Don't get too specific, anything general works. And we need to do this annually and very much so we need to do it now that we are actually, um, after the pandemic and people are coming back, thank goodness, Thank God they're coming back to our fitness facilities. But it's really interesting, but we don't know everything that we need to do with clients because we are not medical professionals. But Deborah, how do you bridge that line? Because the reality is we're bridging it every single day. We look at people, we see what's good for them, and and there if you get to see your doctor for seven or eight minutes at a time, that's what a lot of PPOs limit people to. That's all you get. So I can't even get an appointment with my physician for another 12 weeks, another three months. And then when I see her, it's going to be for seven minutes. And then I'm thrown at a physical therapist who I hate to say this, and I don't mean to offend you, Evan, because you are not part of this crowd. But a lot of physical therapists, sometimes I feel like I know more than they do from practical application. Thank you. He's kind of nodding his head. He hates me a little bit, but he's kind of nodding his head. So I'm going to run with it. But Deborah, how do we, we also manage it? Because Christine, I hear what you're saying and every lawyer fiber in me is agreeing, but the reality is I got to work with these folks. So Deborah, how do we do this? Yeah, a great question. So back to Christi or Christine's comment, I think a scope of practice is really what she's talking about. And I take for for somebody who's in a membership, for instance, every three months, I have them update that health history because things change and I need them to fill it out as a reminder. My things change. Maybe my medication, maybe it's my status. Maybe I'm noticing things now I wasn't. And yet, because I deal with it every day, I'm not going to remember to tell my fitness professional this. So I think that having the very frequently do it, review it with you, going through those questions with, with people in a group uh, situation so that they understand the value of the answers that I get and how I can help them. And the other piece is helping them when they have those seven minutes with their practitioner getting the most out of it by suggesting these may be things that you would want to ask. These would be good questions. These would be things to ask if it's appropriate for you to try or to do. And what are your limitations? What are the guidelines? What are the possibilities? I think that's where you can really yes. put on your coaching hat and be of value. Yes. And I really like that. Um, making sure that we know, um, that we're staying within our our care of practice mm -hmm. um, but I'm gonna jump back a little bit and I'm gonna ask you guys help me here if I've got a client that walks mm -hmm. in and says I have arthritis it's in my elbows what do you recommend and the first thing out of your mouth of course is I'm not a doctor nurse or physical therapist except Evan's gonna say that but as a fitness professional, here are some general guidelines. Can you provide some general guidelines, Deborah, that you use with your clients, even through Zoom? Mm -hmm. Mobility first. Definitely, we're going to focus on mobility first and what their limitations are. That point where they're pain-free 
to the point where they're not and what it is that caused them flare. So gathering some information from them, getting them to think about and realizing that the success is going to happen if we stop before we get to the edge every time. So stopping feeling like you could have done a little bit more, but maybe still you've done a little bit more than you did last time. That's where we want to progress with somebody like that. And, and that's going to gain trust um, as well as, you know, their buy-in to this is feeling better because I am moving. But I think too, um, it's once you've got mobility, we're starting with lighter weights and a moderate to high, not, not extremely high because you get into the wear and tear versus the too much weight and less is more. So one set, very conservative. And again, stop where you think you could have done more. Let's see how that feels for the next 72 hours. Um, are there any text or articles that you might recommend that then you can recommend to your clients? Uh, Christine or Evan, do you have any text that you might recommend? Of course, your own book. But I'm talking about something that <laughs> possibly are, yeah, oh, it just happened to be right on my bookshelf um, but seriously because a lot of times we want to recommend something to our client and Christine again I'm seeing you nod um, because you're going to get these clients then they're, they're not going to say all right well I have arthritis so I'll leave now um, you're going to have to train them for the for the next 30 to, to 50 minutes to 60 minutes and then, of course, shoot them over to their physician. But what are some basic things we can have them do? And what are some basic recommendations we can make? Want me to go? Um, yeah, sure. So the one of the things I love to have when someone says they open their mouth and say arthritis, what's your support? What's the education? Have you looked into what you have, what you've been told you have? No, nope, Christine, you, Christine, sorry to do this. What I'm asking you to provide is do you have a text or an article that our instructors and trainers on this call can then send to, can provide or give to their clients? I do. I have, if someone asks me, I'll have a sheet of paper, usually my client intake form, um, and it will say this is, you know, this is, these are different forms of arthritis. I work with the arthritic population and these are some things to expect. Christine, and would you feel comfortable sharing that with our listeners? Because it's so wonderful. Yes. And the other one is to go to my RA team on Facebook. It's a Facebook group that offers articles that are so helpful for people that have different forms of arthritis. And it's, it's free, but it's something that makes you feel like you're not alone. Oh, that's a great resource. My RA mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. And that's, and they can just find it on Facebook. Facebook. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Thank you. That's a wonderful recommendation. Sorry to interrupt. Now, you got to go back and keep talking about what you were saying. You were talking about intake. Okay. So one of the, um, one of the things that is important, I'm going to jump back, but we talked about when you're assessing someone and you finally get someone, there is so much research out there right now that says if you have arthritis, you should be lifting weights. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there's other, you know, research that says, no, just your body weight. That mm -hmm. is so individual. And when, as a fitness professional, every body is so different, especially with arthritis, one day your client can walk in and feel like they can bench press a million pounds. The next day they can barely walk. So when Deborah talked about range of motion, this is not just a, well, we did range of motion yes, or yesterday or earlier in the week. It has to be an every time thing. And you know, when I teach the chronic disease um, certificate for SCW, I actually have a it's like about a six minute range of motion. I go from head down to the toes and actually put people through, you know, the first five or six minutes, if I'm gonna work with a client that has arthritis and I look at their range of motion, it's the first five minutes I see them and I do it again, the exact same thing, the last five minutes. And it's me looking at 
their range of motion, asking them about their pain level, what, you know, what's going on with your shoulder. It's a chance for you to really analyze their body and have them self-assess as well, mm -hmm. because it's that communication you have to have. You can't do anything if they're having a severe flare up the day that they see you, but you planned arms. It's not how it works with someone with arthritis. Oh, that's very, that's wonderful insight. Evan, I saw you nodding when, when Christine was talking about the assessments, when she was talking about the, the Facebook group, and also when she was talking about the variability of what your client's going to show up as that day. Yeah, that was huge. I'm so glad you shared that, Christine, because one of the things that is frustrating to me a little bit in the industry is people will, will create these programs for their clients and they and they want to stick to those programs regardless of their client and how their client is presenting when you're working with clients with any type of arthritis especially if you're, if you're dealing with an inflammatory type of arthritis or, or an autoimmune type of arthritis they can be awesome one day and the very next day be in a completely different state so it's very important you know exactly what Christine said. We check in with our clients every single day. We do a little self-assessment every single day just to see where they are. And if they're in a good place, yeah, let's, let's continue. And also keep in mind that just because they have a good day doesn't mean that we're going to blast them today just because they're having a good day. It's let's just see how you do today and then we can build on it tomorrow if tomorrow's another good day. So I love the self-assessment every single day. We do a little bit of self-assessment every single day, just simple, easy movements that anyone can do. And then even the post-assessments at the end of the day also just to check in to make sure the client is feeling good, which they should mm -hmm. feel good when they leave your session, not feel <laughs> beat up. So, and that's very important when you're working with clients that have any kind of arthritis that they're not leaving your sessions beat up and just worn out. You just leave a little bit in the tank, so to speak, so that they can come back and number one, feel good about what they did. Number two, they're not scared off from it. And then number three, they feel confident about going forward with the program that you have created. And one and more thing, can I have one more thing, Sarah, just because you know, yes, about definitely about resources. And I'm happy to share this. I wrote, a, I wrote a forward for one of my friend's books. She wrote, she wrote a book for her clients and I wrote a forward about the importance of movement and exercise. I'll, I will ask her if it's okay. I'm sure she'll be okay with me sharing it and I'll send it to you guys and you guys can send it out to your yes. community and as well. We always send out after, at the end of the webinars, we send out just a little reminder that here's the recording. And if you click on that, you'll be able to go right there and underneath, we usually will li list some of the resources. Um, if I were going to ask you, Evan, um, what type of exercises, what are, why don't you give me, I mean, it's hard to do because it's an entire body analysis, but if I were ask, going to ask you for the top five assessment type of protocols that you might conduct, what would be those top five? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you my top five real quick because because I because I know we're we're short on time and I want to make sure we, we give everybody some time to answer this question. Number one always has to be breathing. You have to look at your client's breathing, and we don't think about breathing as it relates to osteoarthritis or any kind of arthritis. But when we think about your body's number one main primary function, it's to breathe to keep you alive. And if we know if we look at a lot of our clients in pain and a lot of clients with any kind of arthritis they're not going to be breathing well. Most of them will not be breathing well. So number one, we're looking at breathing, helping to maximize breathing. We're gonna look at squatting too, because again, getting down into and out of a chair, we wanna look at how someone squats. We may not use it as an exercise based upon what they're presenting with. However, as Christine nicely pointed out, or maybe Deborah or both of you guys pointed out, strength training is one of the best ways to address any kind of arthritis. And again, we just have to be strategic about it. So, so we're looking at squatting because that's an up and down sort of exercise. Forward bending, because again, when you think about the things that everybody does in everyday life, you have to bend forward. So we want to see how our clients are bending forward, reaching overhead. Everybody's got to reach up, reach overhead, grab something that's higher than, than the countertop. So we're looking at overhead reaching. So, and then some kind of rotation, just a standing rotation, just full body rotation. How do you rotate one side versus the other? And we're, we're really looking for asymmetries in motion as well so we can address the asymmetry in our clients motions that's great so breathing squatting forward bending reaching overhead and rotating and looking for asymmetric movement patterns and discomfort during those movement patterns yep. those are absolutely, absolutely. yeah it, those are wonderful those are very helpful thank you for that and um 
Deborah, are there certain type of assessments that you do um, that might include these five elements or are there different things that really come to light when you're training one of your clients? Yeah, well, echo what Evan said. I think by far squats are always going to be there because even if someone will say I can't squat, they're sitting down multiple times a day and getting up and um, otherwise you're probably not seeing them. So that is definitely one. Um, I, I like to look at cat cow back, you know, just look at what kind of mobility do they have? And that's not always an indication of arthritis, but it can be, it can also be just a neural component. They haven't done that for a very long time. And they don't have that recruiting and patterning in, but you know, it is one thing to tell, um, you know, is there pain here? Is there any association? Are they able to make that connection? Because it's probably a place to begin in order to increase their mobility and help them feel a little bit better. So um, to elaborate on what Eben said, I mean, he probably gave us the best little battery right there. But <laughs> um, I love I love those love rotation and in ways where they may or may not need to weight bear in order to to do anything so that we look for you know, where is this possible for everybody to participate at whatever level they're starting at? Yeah, and it's interesting. Diana said something very, very, I thought very salient. She said pain level. You know, I know this, um, uh, unfortunately, one of my sons has had multiple, multiple back surgeries and has a lot of connective tissue disorders. And the first question out of every physician's mouth, every nurse's mouth, every physical therapist's mouth is, how's your pain level today, one through 10? And he basically, I think after 10 years of this, he does, I don't wanna answer, you know. But for some, that really does help us. We also see that Heather says she teaches yoga and she noticed that breathing and range of mo motion for her was a big telltale sign. So thank you, Heather, for, for volunteering that. Christine, um, are there separate five movements that you like to utilize? Is there a way you like to general, pre generally perform an evaluation? So before we run out of time, there's one really, really important thing that we have not spoken about with assessment and movement, and it's the mind. And what we need to think about with assessment before we get into even the movements like we talked about yes we should have our basic you know our squats our twists our lunges the fundamental movements we hope that you, as a fitness professional you have the basic groundwork and fundamentals of how to coach a squat but when it comes to your client with arthritis number one most likely they're not looking to get into a bikini that's not why they're coming to you. That's the reason not? they're coming, it's not. I mean, it's crazy, right? Never usually, again. <laughs> no, no. Um, usually it's because they're in pain or they want to just live a better quality of life. And the word that I throw out all the time is independence. How long do you want to live independently? And it sometimes it it really is a mindset shift. And the one thing I want to bring up to everyone is that people who are diagnosed with arthritis or a chronic disease or anything, they go through an injury or a traumatic experience in life, that you have to address their mindset. And you were just talking, Sarah, about pain. And it is this is mm. research based. Every study you read. People that are depressed have higher, experience higher pain. People who, there was just a study I read from Harvard that they were giving them happiness treatments. And that was a whole different thing, but they were doing these different treatments to adjust their mindset. And it was like six months later, half of them went off their arthritis medications and cut really? them in half. And I mean, these are the things that this is groundbreaking research right now that we all have our hands on. I mean, you could research PubMed and you could research, you know, mindset and arthritic pain. And these papers will come up. So 
it's really important. This, but this is, this is really important. It's really key. And you're, it, it's leading Christine directly into my next question, which is how do we motivate these people then to participate? Because I think, and I'm going to draw back again, I think when my son Louis says, I'm not answering that question, it's because he doesn't want to go, he, he doesn't want to go down the pain drain you know, as he calls it, where it's, where do I feel things? What's going on with my body? It's, he's living a very positive life, swimming regularly, walking regularly. You know, it's, it's amazing what he's able to do. Um, but I love the way you talked about independence. And that's such a key motor, motivation. And Donovan just said one year later, um, a change of lifestyle and location put me in a much, much better mindset and 80% of um, his pain or her pain went away. Um, and that's really kind of, it's, it's just amazing what the mind can do. So Christine, how are we going to motivate these clients? First thing, I'm sorry, but I'm launching on to the independence. I love that because every person wants to feel independent, strong, and able to survive on their own. What other motivations do you provide your clients? So we want to make sure that, all right, what are your goals? Okay, my goal is to, I make sure that my clients with chronic diseases set goals for the future. And I don't care, you can study the centenary, the centenary, yeah, the, uh, the right, centenarians, 100-year-old people, Yes. You can study all the blue zones all over the world. And one of the one of the basics that comes back is that all of these people have this sense that time is never going to run out. For people with chronic illnesses, if they sit there, like even myself, and say, you know what, I only have five or 10 more years of movement, that's depressing. But if I say, hey, you know what, in 10 years, I want to be able to fill in the blank, <laughs> give them something that they can look forward to in the way future. So it's setting huge goals, knowing that just showing up twice a week is gonna take you towards that huge goal is really important. And that's that whole idea of independence of, you know, you're always looking and moving towards something. And maybe it's, I want to, you know, live, move to Florida. Maybe I want to be able to ski when I'm 85. Well then let's take this small goal, but work towards that bigger goal. And I, it sounds kind of, you know, cheesy, but it's, but really it's really, important. it is very, very helpful. <laughs> Evan, when you're dealing with your clients and you're trying to get them, you know, it, it's all the way we approach this breathing, squatting, forward bending. It's like da 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 da, chatting away, finding what's going on in their life, this and that. How then do you work with your clients to set motivations, set goals, and, and see what they can um, uh, achieve? Yes, and I'm going to piggyback off what Christine said because she set it up brilliantly. We have to focus our client on their outcomes. And when people come to us as fitness professionals, when they come to me as, as a chiropractor, you know, physical medicine person, they're, they're looking for, like, I want to get out of pain. That's, that's not a good goal. That's because pain is an interpretation by your brain, your, by your nervous system. It's not an actual representation of what's happening at a tissue level. So we want to focus on what is your goal? What do you want to do? What can't you do right now that you really love and want to do? Somebody wrote in, in the chat box, purpose. Yeah, what is your purpose? What do you want to do? Do you want to be a great grandmother? Do you want to be a great um, skier, like Christine mentioned? Do you want to hike? Do you want to you know, get older and, and be... Uh, be, continue to be independent. So focus them on a goal that's independent of the pain, not that you're ignoring the factor in pain, but focusing them, them away from pain because they can continue to improve, have those functional outcomes, get stronger, get better balance, have better mobility, have more energy, even though the pain hasn't changed. And that in itself is very motivating when you focus on the process and not the outcome of Hey, I still have pain. So this this thing that we're doing together, you know, in fitness isn't working because I'm still in the same amount of pain. Focus on the right. outcome and Brilliant. celebrate the successes of, of being part of the process, being consistent with the process versus just trying to get out of pain. It's very important change. Simple, you know, like like Christine says, very simple mindset shift 
but, but very powerful mindset shift. Wow. Um, uh, Deborah, I saw you kind of nodding and thinking, <laughs> this is, it's tough, it's tough stuff. You have it hard. I mean, you've got a, you built an enormous business. You, you're very, very successful with the clients. Your clients absolutely adore you. I've gone to your website, seen your testimonials. How do you then keep them motivated? What is your, like, you know, a lot of us have, have virtual businesses. How, where did you, how do you keep the magic? So, well, Christine and Evan have really echoed some great goals and great ways to motivate. But one of the things that I find it so difficult with my audience is women between 45 and 70, um, they put themselves last where they have and they find it hard to take care of themselves. So they are also most susceptible between 40 and 59. I think women are the biggest risk group for depression. And one of the things that has become the umbrella over flipping 50, although we are a fitness site, I use this mantra and that is that I think there's no more important, powerful health influencer in the world than a midlife woman. So if we can let her believe that it's not just her, but it's the impact she has on three generations. No one else in the world can say that. No politician can say that. And so it's what message are you sending? It becomes bigger than you and maybe it hopefully bigger than the pain. I love that. I love it. I feel very powerful right now. One, <laughs> I'm going to practice my skiing. Two, I'm, I'm going to do five things and check myself out every morning before I go skiing. And three, I'm going to say it. I'm sorry. I'm going to say it. I hope I don't offend it. Damn it. I'm powerful. All right, you guys, I, I love this. I am just so excited by this. I think you guys have done an amazing job. I'm quickly going to show you what we have for our... Um, our Active Aging Summit that is coming up. It's coming up this weekend. We still have space available because it's all virtual. Look at these wonderful presenters, Deborah. Look at these fabulous presenters we have in Evan. We also have Christine, and we've got a terrific video to show you. It's this Friday and Saturday. Our certifications are on Friday. It's all day, Saturday and Sunday. It's a great conference. We also have a wonderful convention coming up. California Mania, no masks. Thank you very much. Can you guys all see the site? Yes? Okay. I love it. No masks. San Francisco did away with the mask. Whoopie doo. I am absolutely thrilled. Love it. I am so excited. We had our DC Mania. It was 
fabulous. We're going to be in San Francisco. Then we're going to Florida in May. Then Atlanta and Dallas. We're actually going to be in the beginning of August and the end of August. And then, of course, in October, we're back in Chicago. But thank you guys for joining me. Evan, we'll see you this weekend. Christine, we'll see you this weekend. Same with you, Deborah. And Deborah, thank you for joining us this evening. Max, you thank did you. a great job. First time running a webinar on his <laughs> own. Yay. Thank you all. And everybody have a great night. Thank you. Take care, guys.